Yes, indeed. So we are ready to jump into the action here. Let's take a look at these opening hands. Giant Killer, Usher of the Fallen, Seasoned Hello Blade, Mall of the Skyclaves. What more could you want from Palo's side of things? Good grief. Yeah, that's about the stone cold nuts right there from Paulo. A nice <laughs> hand, you know, still a very strong hand here from Gabriel Nassif. Um, so this is going to be an exciting one. This is like the magic Super Bowl right here. Oh, the yes. two players that have been playing the best magic here in the last year uh, faced up against each other. It's going to be awesome. Oh man, tricky decision here for Nassif. Decides to put the Eliminate back, then brings it back, sends a land away. T typically, or well, technically has three lands in hand with Birth of Melitus being available to him, but opts to send back that Eliminate, thinking, you know, it's fine. Two removal spells against this white deck. I should be okay. Exactly. Just really valuing, making sure that Nassif is going to be casting that Extinction event on turn four. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I like that. It's a nice careful, safe play. If he starts drawing a ton of land, you know, he's probably going to wish he did something different, but still fine. You get things off here with Birth of Mel Melitus or Melitus as mm -hmm. the Glass Casket is going to hang out in hand here for Nassif. I bet he'll be happy to see that seasoned Hallow Blade hit the board as that is a very good target for the Exile effect from Glass Casket. And being on the flip side, it's also a great target, the Glass Casket is, um, for Skyclave Apparition. You know, that mm -hmm. is the one thing where white shines a little bit better than the red decks, where if you get Glass Casket on your Annex, let's say, yeah. you're not getting that back unless you play like Ember's Shieldbreaker, which is just not really being played right now. But Skyclave Apparition is just a great answer um, for Glass Casket naturally. Yeah, it's a really good addition to the white decks, just being able to, you know, either disrupt your opponent's removal or get a blocker out of the way, something to that effect. It's a very, very powerful card, as is Model of the Skyclaves, which comes on down, straps itself to Seasoned Hello Blade, and boom, take five. Yeah, really nice uh, play here from Paulo, not extending any more creatures into the battlefield. We know with Paulo's hand, you pretty much are forced to play that mall with having a second mall in your hand. Um, mm -hmm. But I wouldn't be too shocked to just see... Nassif dealing with this season hollow blade and then Paulo just saying, you know what? I'm just going to re-equip this mall maybe um, and just force you to deal with that Oof. and then uh, move on to something else. We'll see what Paulo decides. A lot of options still. Yep. Malls are plenty in hand as well. It's fun to strap up a bunch of creatures. We just got to get these creatures mm -hmm. to stick around and we can see from the con constitution of Gab's deck that <laughs> the creatures aren't going to be sticking around for too long. Yeah, not really here. And yeah, just doing that play exactly, just strapping it up. Um, you know, we do have some nice plays from Nassif here. I like the aggressiveness of putting Yorian into Nassif's hand. Mm -hmm. With having both Elspeth Conger's death and binding the old gods, you really get a ton of value by pre or by like really early and aggressively putting Yorian into your hand. Yeah, it's especially good to, you know get multiple creatures with the with a variety of uh, you know arc, excuse me with a variety of artifacts and mm -hmm. enchantments on the battlefield like the glass casket you know sometimes we'll see skyclave apparition in these decks but yep. uh, opting for elspeth conquers death to take care of the mall of the skyclaves mm -hmm. and uh, if there is a follow up to that well Paolo does know that there is a yorin in hand so this puts him in a pretty tricky situation Exactly. You really get um, incentivized to not play into ECD during this turn. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if we look at Paulo's hand, the only option to not play into it is to just like attack with Faithless Haven. It's not great. Um, so no matter what, Paulo's next play is going to be quite good. Yeah. And it's, I have also, to say, it's also like a loss of tempo for the aggressive deck, too, because it's like, okay, I have a bunch of three mana spells in my hand. Mm -hmm. I really don't want to lose them. So, you know, you can just sit there and try and wait for Elspeth Conquer's death to go away. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just a waiting game at that point. Yeah, and then if you wait, you know, you're giving these Yorian decks, which are, you know, decks that gain value slowly over time, you're giving them time, and mm -hmm. uh, that's still bad for your gameplay as well. So you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place with these kind of Yorian loops. So Paolo just opting for the Faceless Haven, swinging in there for four points of damage, taking Gab down to seven. Mm -hmm. Acquisitions expert drawn off the top here for Gab Nassif. 
And I got to say, I love Gabriel Nassif's stream. And I also just love the decks he plays. I, I just have to consider us deck soulmates. Uh, we, <laughs> we truly enjoy playing the same kind of magic. So uh, <laughs> kudos to Nassif. <laughs> Paulo likes to win too much for my taste. That's too much winning. I don't do that much winning. So I, you know, I, <laughs> I uh, feel more like Nassif uh, in that, in that aspect. You got to shake it up a little bit, right? Exactly. <laughs> so acquisitions expert, the one of in the list is going to force a discard here. Mall of the Skyclaves is a duplicate in hand there for Paulo. So that seems to be the pick mm -hmm. to get discarded. Yeah, really curious how he came to uh, that one acquisitions expert. <laughs> well, Corey, if you're watching his streams, I'm sure he would have said so. That's true. Were you not watching That's... when he explained it? I was watching, but I, on his stream, <laughs> he plays a lot more fun cards like Eerie Ultimatum in his deck and stuff. Ah. So I think he uh, condensed it down to just play the good ones for those. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Another Mall of the Sky Claves coming on down, taxed by Elspeth Conquer's Death, Chapter 2. Going to suit up this 2-1 once again, make it a big old 4-3 and swing in, taking Gabnasif down to 3. Yeah, nice play here, just really dancing around that Yorian that is face up to Paolo and just not making... Any any good turn where Paolo could have played Yorian and blinked out. Oh, that was huge. Ella. That was huge. Not only was the Archon really good here, but the Archon was not going to be enough knowing that there's a Skyclave on the other side. But yeah. Archon into a play that is an enchantment that triggers Constellation. And not only that, uh, an uh, enchantment that triggers Constellation and shuts down Faithless Haven. Yeah. That was just unbelievable. Absolutely incredible pickup here for Gab Nassif, who at this point, like you said, they get more value the longer the game goes. Mm -hmm. At this point, you got to think that Gab is turning the corner and this game is going to be his. So let's see how the reigning world champion navigates this next turn. Oh, man, this... Archon of Sun's Grace. Now, if you remember back to the World Championship, Archon of Sun's Grace was a key card for Paolo Vittor Damo de Rosa winning the entire thing. So he's very familiar with this pony and knows what a pain in the butt it is for aggressive decks. Yeah, no kidding. Nice flashback there where we saw both of these players in the top four of Worlds about a year ago in lovely Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Skycave Apparition is going to come on down and deal with the Archon of Sun's Grace. Unfortunately, he cannot target the 2 2, so mm -hmm. the Usher of the Fallen is going to knock heads with that. Take it down, and uh, hopefully, Gabnasif can find another blocker. But we do know that there is two copies of Yorion. May also look towards Extinction Event here with the odd numbers mm -hmm. on the battlefield. Yeah, Yorian is a very risky play because we know, uh, as Nasif does as well, that there is. Um, giant killers in the list, and a lot of them. So... Hey, now, that was a very good draw as well. Mm -hmm. Because we can Extinction Event, deal with the Critters, and then whichever one gets suited up, which will be the little dwarf left behind, yep. can be taken care of with Eliminate. So my goodness, Gab is drawing excellently. Yeah, no kidding. Gab had to get something there because Paulo just sequenced his spells so great and sequenced... Um, be, having a good amount of odd and even number creatures here by boasting there instead of like let's let's say playing giant killer or something that he did line up lethal with this mall equipped and we know that that's not going to work here because of that top deck eliminate <laughs> unreal. So does Palo sniff out this removal spell? Oh man, it's always so tempting to just go, right, I've got lethal, let's go stick on that mall and just swing in. Mm -hmm. but this, is the, this is the part in these matchups where the best players in the world take a, take a moment, just sit back and think, okay, what have you got? Yeah, because normally if it doesn't interrupt your your curve too much, it's not so bad. But here it's a real cost because this costs four. You're not able mm -hmm. to play anything else to the battlefield so now it looks like Nassif is going to be able to untap with no chance that Paulo could attack that turn, which that's yeah. huge. You know, mono red, you could have haste creatures that could be coming at you. Mono white doesn't have that ability. 
No, unfortunately, the luxury of haste is not in the color white, as the 1-1 one, one is taken care of. No more creatures on Paolo's board. And an Elspeth's Nightmare drawn off the top for any additional creature that may come on down. Yeah, not bad there. And we get one of the Yorians down um, for sure. Blinking the Expert, blink that Lithoform Blight to draw an additional card. Um, and Paolo rightfully held a land in hand to be able to just show uh, Gabriel Nassi that and discard that, I assume. Um, and then this giant killer can kill the Yorian, but not knowing about the second Yorian, we'll have another blocker here for whatever creature gets equipped by Maul eventually here. Yeah. Ooh, second giant killer drawn at the top here for Palo Vitor. Yeah, Looks like now, it's, now it's kind of awkward because that sixth land really did unlock quite, you know, quite some good plays the double the double spell here stomp down or chop down plus giant killer is good but not insane <laughs> uh, the thief just keeps drawing haymaker after haymaker won't be able to play Amaria's call now is going to opt for elspeth's nightmare it seems just taking a, a moment to consider the options yeah interesting because you can play yorian um, draw another card, take another card from Paolo. Um, and then as far as I see, there wouldn't be anything that he would lose to except like land, um, equip Maul and as lead and give it protection from blue. So you could attack through Yorian, but that's a lot of cards to have, you know, that's, that's a, yeah. that's a, a tricky thing to play around. Yeah. That's quite unlikely as we see the four, four and the one, two get in there for some points of damage down to eight goes Paolo Vitor. Now, are we going to play this Triumph, or are we going to cycle it? It's going to get that on the battlefield, so Emeria's mm -hmm. Call will be active next turn for Gab Nassif. Helvar, God of Battle, drawn for Palo Vitor. And you got to think that this game is slipping away from him here. Yeah, this is unreal. Both players have played extremely tight. Paulo played extremely tight to force Nassif to have exact answers turn after turn. And Nassif played tight to put himself into a position to get lucky and draw some of these cards that he needed in, in the order that he needed them in. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. showing up on time when needed. Mm -hmm. They both played great to be able to put them in positions to win this game. It comes a Lyris of the dream den. The cat nightmare. As giant killer is going to return from the graveyard to the battlefield. Just to get some bodies in the way here. And going with the other giant killer as well. Possibly. That's a two giant killers and Lurus of the Dream Dan down on the battlefield now. For Palavitor, who is doing his best to stay in this matchup. Going to take a look in the hand here. Just finds creatures. Surprise, surprise. It's a white deck. Plenty of creatures to be found. And Doom Foretold here for Gabna Seif. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what Paulo can draw to get out of this. And, and it's really interesting how many attackers you want to leave back here because they're all different colors, which is great for um, uh, Elseid of Life's Bounty mm -hmm. to be able to make sure that you can't force through any the last couple points of damage but you also want to be getting aggressive to be able to close this game out so this yeah. is a this is a tough turn deep in the tank here is gab nasif considering the options can go for yorion bounce all the artifacts and enchantments on the battlefield could just go for Miria's call and just start swinging doom foretold i think through a bit of a spanner in the works here where he's just thinking like okay if i do this i for sure get rid of something but then i lose the the elspeth's nightmare so yeah plenty of things to consider here yeah and i also just think as the rope goes on nasif's turn his power grows like he, he feeds <laughs> off the rope <laughs> he basically goes super saiyan when you're down within one second he, he's uh -huh. a performance that explains the yellow hat <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Just the 4-4 four, four swinging on in here. Down to 4 it goes Palo. Happy to just let that happen. Now what is the play here from Gabna Nassif? It's going to go for Yorion Sky Nomad, it looks like. 
But no. Just yeah, I think it's that. I think it's either Yorin or Amiria's call. Doom Foretold is not very good right now. Mm -hmm. Um hmm. A little bit of a tricky pickle to be in, huh? Yeah, I think I like Yorian just because it's another lethal threat. But, I mean, Amir, his call, I guess, is two lethal threats. Oh, yeah. Um, two birdies. God, this is tough. This is really tough. In true Nassif fashion, using all the time available to him each turn, making sure that the optimal line is taken... All right, stop teasing us. Let's go. Yorion, down <laughs> on the battlefield. Let's bounce a few things. Ooh, nice. Okay. I like this. Getting glass casket out of there. Yeah, I like this. You can take Yulurus. That perhaps? would make sense to me um, because Elspeth's Nightmare is going to come back and kill one of these giant killers. Mm -hmm. So so no matter what, there's going to be a creature in the graveyard and Lurus can just bring it right back. Uh, might as well get rid of it here. Mm-hmm. Giant Killer taking, being taken care of by Elspeth's Nightmare. Another card drawn. An Acquisitions Expert deals with one of these creatures in hand, so Halvar is going to get binned. I just cannot Ooh. think of a draw for Paulo that wins, him, wins the game on the spot. No, it's not looking super hot here right now. What is no. the draw? It's a snow-covered plane, so that isn't going to do it. We can equip something to the mole, but there's a big old bird serpent in the way. Wait a minute. We can minute. tap down the bird serpent. Actually, yeah, wait, hang on. A, wait a minute. Yeah. Is, wait. is this land just absolutely lethal? Yeah, because it's six la six mana, right? Four to equip, two to tap? Yeah. Okay. Just kidding. Just kidding. JK, land is take, just, uh... take all that back. Crazy. Okay. I mean, yeah, that no, a huge... no instant speed removal either for Nassif, so this... That would have been a huge reason to just Amiria's call, right? I mean, yeah, then two you blockers. get two flyers here. You get two blockers. Oh, he can see it. He knows. See, the reaction there was visceral. Almost. Oh, no. All right. Make him have it, Paolo. In comes the season. Hello, Blade suits it up. With this more of the Skyclaves, this game looked like it was won and done by Gab Nassif, but that six land off the top, being able to equip them all, swing on through for lethal, absolutely incredible stuff wow. there from Palo Vitor. We did not yeah. see that one coming. Good grief. No kidding. And just looking back, um, if you're Gabriel Nassif on there, you really just, there's no reason to not play Amiria's Call if that's what you're afraid of. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Wow, that was so, shocking. Yeah, went for the value play, but, you know, maybe just not expecting another land off the top there for Palo Vitor. As we take a look at the sideboard decisions here from both players, see what's available to them and what it is they decided to do. So bringing in a few more creatures and taking out the giant killers who can be MVP in certain situations, mm -hmm. like the one we just saw being able to tap down the only blocker in the air. What does Gab Nassif do going into this game, number two? Yeah, Nassif taking out Elspeth's Nightmare is um, pretty interesting to me. You would just think that is a card that is actually pretty strong against aggressive decks. Um, but it's really only like Maul of the Skyclaves um, as the non-creature that you're able to get. Um, and, it, and it's just a little a little too late when you're waiting for Chapter 2 of Elspeth's Nightmare. Paula will yeah. just put a, a high equity on just playing Maul before it gets to rest out of your hand. Yeah. All right, well, let's jump into game number two and see how this goes. And the one thing that was really excellent from Paolo in that previous game was, you know, mm -hmm. not valuing the chop down side of the giant, uh, the giant killer, but just playing both of them on the battlefield. Being like, okay, cool, yeah. if one dies, it's fine, but I can keep the other one to tap down, so... Excellent yeah, that was the game. There. That was yep. the game. If he didn't play that second giant killer, he was not able to uh, put himself in a position to strap up that mall and tap down the only flyer. Yeah. Super heads up stuff there from wow. Palavitor as we get into game number two here. Temple of Silence to start things off. Little passage to the bottom of the library. Palavitor is going to get the Usher of the Fallen down on the battlefield and start pumping out little one ones. 
Yeah, and it just really shows that even the best in the world, after playing these insanely long days against the best players in the world, it's really taxing on your brain, you know? I mean, this is a <laughs> exhausting event, um, you know, for back-to-back -back days here. Yeah, it's certainly a marathon. It really is. <laughs> All right, so another tap land for Nassif, passes back the turn to Paolo. Considering how he wants to sequence this, does yep, have several yep. options available to him. Yep, a lot of land, but um, you know, still a pretty strong curve. Turn mm -hmm. one to usher into season hollow blade is is just about all you can hope for. And ooh, <laughs> that was a big draw. We needed that. Oh my goodness. So Gavin receives draws again in this game. Very, very good indeed. Finds the answer to this indestructible sticky threat in season mm -hmm. hollow blade. Yep, just anything to do on this turn was going to be great. Um, you know, Nassif, before he just slams this glass casket, there is still something to consider of putting Yorian into hand and mm -hmm. then just playing Binding the Old Gods and then playing Yorian. Um, but I, I do think you just need to stem the bleeding a little bit here. Yeah. Oh, there would have been more of the Skyclave, so that would have been a bunch of damage coming through if that was the line that Nassif took. But yeah. now we have a bit more of a consideration here as we're going to get in for an attack, not play the Skyclaves mole. Excuse me, not play the mole of the Skyclaves. And when we see a boast here. Yeah, probably just Asher. a boast. Uh, diversifies your converted mana cost here, or I guess uh, your mana value now, since we're uh, we're <laughs> onto that. Um, so a nice play here, instead of just getting in four damage, and then if Nasif were to destroy the Usher, then Paulo's kind of left with nothing there. So. Yeah. So creature on the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> Life of form blight after the <laughs> faceless haven comes down. Oh right my on goodness cue. me! Right on cue, yeah. So now here is a big a big decision. We mm -hmm. know that it seems like the better play would be Archon, um, mm -hmm. because Paulo does not have a Skyclave in hand. But if you play Archon right into a Skyclave, then it it feels pretty bad. Then I think yeah. you'd rather uh, binding like an Usher or something, or even Lithoform the faceless haven, but. If all things said and done and, and Nassif had perfect information and could see the hand, I think he would just slam Archon here and then start gaining that value with these enchantments. Yeah, I think in these games of magic, you got to risk it for the biscuits sometimes. So let's <laughs> see if Gav goes for the higher value play here and getting the Archon down before playing the enchantments. I don't know. I think, he I think he's got an inkling. I think he knows. I don't know. He just risked it last game for said biscuit, and the biscuit uh, kind of bit him back there. So yeah. maybe he's a little more <laughs> feral a little biscuits. More defensible. Beware of those. <laughs> here comes Maul of the Sky Glaze down on the Usher of the Fallen. Going to swing in here for four points of damage. Arkham of Sun's Grace has no interest in blocking that. It's just going to hang back, and down comes an Elseed of Life's Bounty. Won't be able to protect anything this turn without mana available. Oh, my goodness me. He just draws whatever he needs. Just like, oh, hey, deck, could I please have one of these? Cool, thanks. Yeah, that what? was a strong draw as well. Um, being able to get a 2-2 two -two here and have some defense with this Heartless Act. I think if you want to use it, you probably have to use it now. Um, yeah. Or Elsia gets to protect something here. That's why I almost would have liked Binding the Old Gods there. Mm-hmm. Just to be mana efficient, but that Faithless Haven is pretty scary there, so I, I can definitely see the justification. Now I bet there is some consideration to putting Yorian in your hand, yep. Yeah, <laughs> mana efficiency. Yep. Use it all. That's setting up for two turns from the from now, being able to binding next turn, maybe Heartless Act as well if we get land six, and then Yorian blinking two enchantments, which both trigger Archon, is kind of the <laughs> end game plan, which is just, it's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gross. Oh, yeah. goody. Now we got first strike and double strike. So triple strike coming in here. That's not a thing. Please don't quote me. <laughs> oh, not sure the Fallen. Uh, it's going to be blocked or not. No. We're going to, ooh, ooh, you going to take eight? Yeah, because you don't even gain yeah, the sure. life off uh, your own tutu here. So no, you don't. It's pretty brutal. Ooh, this is scary. Oh, man, I would have just thrown that poor pony under the bus, or in this case, <laughs> the usher. 
No blocks. All right. Living on the okay. edge. I okay. love it. And one um one one key word from El Cid of Life's Bounty. El Cid can protect enchantments, but cannot yeah. protect uh Maul here. So mm-hmm. binding the old gods can actually just cleanly deal with that if Nasif chooses. Oh, man, this is gonna be such a gross sequence because we've got Binding the old gods, we picked up another life of one blight if we need to try and dig for land six. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we could just go binding, binding, Yorion, bounce, bounce, kill everything, which sounds disgusting. Yeah. Ooh, all right. So just in case this Faceless Haven wasn't, uh, you know, disabled enough, it is now going to be further useless by this second life of one blight. That was a big drop. Shut one down. Thing- nice. The one thing Nasif does, yep, and he's double checking to make sure it's enchantment, not artifact. <laughs> um, you know, the the one thing that Nasif did have going for him here is if Elsiad was going to give protection to attack through these creatures, mm-hmm. the mall would be unequipped. Protection from white is the only thing that we could do right now, and that would yep. unequip the mall. So that was uh, some silver lining there. Yep. And now Gab Nassif is very happy to just start turning these ponies sideways, gaining Ooh, five life of that attack. Hey, Luris, what's up? Okay, I guess Luris isn't insane because we cannot return the mall or anything. Mm-hmm. But I do. But just returning uh, El Cid is is pretty impressive. Yeah. The so Helvar got a bounty swinging on in here. So a couple options from Nassif here. If you double block Halvar, um, Mm -hmm. Paulo almost assuredly gives protection to Halvar and then no life is gained um, as well. Or if you block one to each, you know, you you do get to gain some life. Um, Or just take it and try to be attacking back. A lot of options. Mm, I like the block there on the Usher. But what Nassif doesn't know is that there's a little Luris ready and waiting to bring back whichever one drop kicks the bucket mm-hmm. here. I like that block, but I think if you're going to block with one, you should block with both. Um, yeah. To get that double life link trigger. I, I think it, this is going to get protection anyway, so it, yeah, it yeah. truly wouldn't matter too much. But just in case, Paulo didn't want to actually use that. <laughs> But the problem that Paolo still has is that there is a pony with friends in the air and needs something to mm-hmm. deal with that desperately. Yeah, still looking really, really rough here for Paolo. And now this Yorian triggers, what, three, uh, triggers Constellation, Constellation three times right now. Oh, so yeah. we're going to get a Yorian, three Pegasus, <sighs> destroy something. Yeah, this is Ooh, uh, this is looking real bad for reals this time. <laughs> for reals, yeah. It's for reals, yeah. As a Yorian Sky Nomad's going to come on down, bounce all of the enchantments, and get three more, mm-hmm. three more birdies here. Man, Yorian is such a such a good magic card. <laughs> Yeah, I should really try to play with that card sometimes. Yeah. I think uh, I think I might enjoy I, it. I think you yeah. like it. You know, it seems to be you know right up your alley. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. All right, away you go. Back you come. Life of Form Blight going to get attached again. Draw two more cards. Three ponies. And binding will take care of something on the battlefield. But uh, Elseed will be able to protect here. <laughs> So good. So oh very strong. Oh, 15 to 5. Yeah, missing out on blue cards is a big cost from these Yorian decks when you're up against, like, let's say, Genesis Ultimatum decks or Soltai. Mm-hmm. But when you're playing against aggressive decks, you know, give me Abzan all day. <laughs> it is just so strong against aggro. <sighs> all right, so... Both creatures swinging in here. Halvar along with Luris. Luris is going to get some life here. Courtesy of the El Seed of Life's Bounty. Eight, though, I don't think is going to cut it here to keep Palo alive as we're well, going to see a, a big old swing all, <laughs> you know? Just, 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 you know, overkill. 
Why not? Let, let's let's go for it. So that'll tie things up here. Gabna Seif picking up the victory in game number two here. Paolo Vitor is going to look to come back in game number three with guns blazing. So what do you see happening in this next game, Corey? Yeah, I don't really see too many changes based on play and draw here from these two decks, except maybe Paolo is going to bring those Usher of the Fallens. Um, in where maybe you wouldn't bring them in on the draw. Uh, but for the most part, the configurations are going to be the same. Paul mm -hmm. is just going to be hoping to come out with a good, strong curve and I hope Nassif does not have too much, too many interaction to stop that. Yeah, curve out like a crazy person and hope that Nassif doesn't draw as insanely well as he has been. So let's jump yeah. in to game number three here between PVDDR and a good old yellow hat. And one thing um, that I want to just bring some some focus to is Gabriel Nassif, even after that game, was like really shaking his head because he recognized game one. He may have threw it away. And Nassif is one of the best players at doing that. And that is after a game, uh, after a match, looking back at what you could have done even in the games you win and to, to try to improve your game, you know, rewatches his match matches and stuff like that. He's uh, really admirable with how he approaches the game. Uh, yeah, we need to sense. take a break. Don't. No. How All right, going? let's jump in here. Let's see what the opening hands look like and uh, get busy with it. As uh, Paolo is quite happy with the hand that he has and Nassif, a little unsure about that one, but opts to keep it. Life of Form yep. Blight in hand to shut down the Faceless Haven and Extinction Events a plenty to uh, manage the board. Yeah, Extinction Event just being a really, really strong card here against Paulo. Um, Paulo does have the one nice factor of knowing that Nassif only has Extinction Event and not Shadow's Verdicts or whatever. So he knows to diversify his curve whenever he can. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have a choice, but you know sometimes <laughs> you can. Ooh. <laughs> oh my goodness me eliminate off huge. the top but luckily we've got the two protection friends down on the battlefield well indestructible mm -hmm. and you know the, the ones that keep you safe the they're down on the battlefield safe, yep. and they can look out <laughs> for their buddy hmm. so what so does here, the safe value more here getting another tap land down or keeping mana up for eliminate I think it's either play Lithoform Blight on a snow-covered plains, which I don't love, or just playing a forest and saying go, um, eliminating something during Paolo's turn, and then the next turn you play Lithoform Blight, play the tap land then. Um, but yeah, values just uh, making a good play on his turn instead. So I'm going to get the card here. Uh, Finds another Lithoform Blight. And a Hollow Blade drawn here for Paolo. Okay. That was a pretty good draw. Just because mm -hmm. you have two odd converted mana cost creatures in play, to be able to diversify there is quite strong. Um, Maul on Elseid is an option as well. Mm -hmm. Especially because you have the puppy to protect the Elseid. You mm -hmm. could also see just the Season Hallowblade coming down with the protection from both creatures. Yeah, that's what available. I like here. Just because Selfless Savior does protect against the Eliminate that we know, but it doesn't protect against like Glass Casket if Paula were to, mm -hmm. or if Nassif were to have that. Arcan of Sun's Grace is the draw here for Nassif. Not finding any lands at the moment, but does have two available to him on the left hand side of his hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is getting kind of scary because this Eliminate is not super good right now, that's for sure. No, it's not. All right, back to Paolo. Has the option to maul the Skyclaves, the seasoned Hello Blade. Let's see if he goes for it. I'd love to see a land down first, just in case we need to use the L seed, but I agree with you in using that for glass casket situations, whereas yep. the puppy dog can just protect against the removal spells. Yeah, and at instant speed, the selfless savior is going to be able to protect against any of the plays that Nassif could have. Mm -hmm. um, so now Nassif could eliminate that at the beginning of combat and see if uh, Apollo values um, just discarding a card instead of sacking selfless savior. But that's not great. 
I would imagine Paula would just sack Selfless Savior to get an extra five damage in. Yeah, for sure. Not sure if this is the turn we want to be tapping down where uh, there's a juicy seven damage to be had. And here we go. Yeah, I think you have to just eliminate uh, one of the one drops and mm -hmm. then just have a kind of sad extinction event next turn <laughs> on even um, because the season hollow blade is, is just so powerful. Yeah. You call it sad, but I mean, this is five <laughs> points of damage coming in each turn. You don't deal with it. So. True, true. I just always think it's sad whenever extinction event doesn't get at least a two for one or when Yorian <laughs> doesn't blink something. These are the sad scenarios. Yes, <laughs> very, very sad indeed. Eliminate targeting the poor little pooch. I won't play a factor in this game for the rest of it, and unless we find a Lurus. But uh, for now, time being, we're just going to take Gavin and Seif down to 11, follow up with another Faceless Haven, which Gavin and Seif does have the answer to in hand. Yeah, Faithless Haven being really strong here, and now we have the choice between Extinction Event or Archon, or even Lithoform Blight on the other Faithless Haven. But I think it's got to be between Extinction Event and Archon, and I yeah. totally agree with this. You have to get that Season Hollow Blade out of there. Oh, yeah. Even's going to be the call here. Bye-bye, Season Hollow Blade. Leaving just the Alcide of Life's Bounty on the battlefield. And draws another one, does Palo Vitor. So now it's interesting. We can just attack with Faithless Haven if we wanted to, um, but or or just play Halvar here. That seems mm -hmm. pretty strong as well. Okay, let's looks see like, what the pick is. Looks like we might be going all in and playing. Nice. Uh, oh, Paulo does leave that in hand. Nice. So we can protect Halvar. He's down on the battlefield along with an Alcide, and things are looking a little dicey here for Gabna Seif, who really needs to find a way to deal with these critters. Yeah, and I think that seems like another scenario where you probably just have to extinction event away Halvar. Mm -hmm. um, the double strike aspect of Maul just is lethal, you yeah. know? So. Well, Halvar's but taken care of. We're lining up a nice play here for Gabriel Nassif. If we can yeah. go Archon into Lithoform Blight on the Faithless Haven, get a 2-2 Pegasus. I mean, that's pretty Ooh, good. That is pretty good. And Paolo's got the answer for that exact line. If we... Uh... Hmm. All right. So, in for five while we can. I love using the land while it's available. Mm -hmm. Here comes the Alcide. One mana left up. <laughs> Eliminate drone at the top of the library. I'm at the edge of my seat. This this is getting <laughs> this is really so close. close. Ooh -wee. Because right now, you know, we're at a spot where you could animate Faithless Haven. Uh, you know, not anymore. But you yeah. could Faithless Haven, give it protection from white, and attack through, but that's four instead of five. I mean, this is just razor-thin margins right now. <laughs> oh, you just keep strawing removal. I don't even oh, know how good removal goodness. is right now against El Seeds. No, it's not good at all. Oof. <sighs> Here comes Skyclave Apparition, going to take care of that pony. Just a 2-2 two -two left. It loses lifelink because the Archon is off the board. Now we just sit back and wait. Oh my <laughs> goodness me. Another one drawn. There were two in hand anyways. But it's just another pony down on the battlefield here. Yeah, and now Paul, or I mean, Nassif can start attacking and start getting some life total or life points back. You don't really mm -hmm. care about starting to lower Paulo's life total quite yet. It's just all about raising yours up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these Eliminate and Heartless Acts are just not that good. Um, against these Alcides, but. So what is the ideal draw here for Palo to close out this game as quick as he can? Because now he's he's facing an uphill battle with these lifelinkers. Yeah, I think something that gives him a good chunk of value, like Lurus, is probably mm -hmm. the best. Um, another Maul. Eh, Maul's not okay. Another Skyclave to deal with this Archon. Yeah. That's one, probably the best. One more Archon. One more uh, Skyclave Apparition, please. No, instead we get a land. So 
equipping the model of the Skyclaves to make this a big old 4-4. Okay, and one of these removal spells, you know, doesn't do much right now, and I wouldn't even be shocked to see Paulo not attack, um, just because if you attack for four, uh, you know, then Nassif is attacking back and gaining that <laughs> four, life five. right back. Yeah. No, nope, looks like the Skyclave Apparition is going to be on blocking duty mm -hmm. with its backup with the LCW Life's bounties. Yeah, and I think you still... You know, you at least consider firing off one of these removal spells yeah. on Skyclave. Um, you know, not going to work, but at least you're you're chipping down on these protection yeah. creatures. Because if you ever do kill that Skyclave, it's going to be unbelievable because you get a 4-4 four, four back. Oh, yeah. um, and, and it's a pretty big tempo loss to have to re-equip that maul. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great. You know, it's a similar situation to playing against a control player. It's like, you know, they have counter spells in hand, but you have to work your way through them. Yes, you got to fight through. And I mean, <laughs> once we get to eight mana, okay? <laughs> once we get to eight mana, the Yorian plus, uh, or, you know, a buy Yorian, play Yorian, and get two more consolation triggers with those mm -hmm. Lithoform Blights, that's when it just really gets out of hand here. So I wouldn't be too shocked to see um, Nasif even putting that Amiria's Call into play tapped, even though it's just such a strong card here. But that Yorian, once you hit eight mana, is yeah. just lights out here, especially with two Archons. <laughs> All right, so Yorion to hand. Okay. Now, do we shock this in or to get the Archon? I definitely wouldn't time? shock it in. I definitely wouldn't shock it in. That's pretty risky. Hangs right. on to it. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, another land off the top here for Palo Vitor. Things are slipping away from him. Yep, that was huge. I mdecir, mean, the one thing, you know, these Yorian decks can kind of flood out and draw some lands because even your lands are 4-4 angels and stuff, but when Mono White floods out, it's it's trouble. Yeah. Big trouble indeed. Another removal spell off the top here for Gab Nassif. So deciding between getting the extra value of creatures, or just dealing with this pesky creature once and for all with the double removal spells. Yep, and the reason to do this, and we see Nassif kind of shake his head, because there's one play that could happen if, um, you know, Nassif were to go for Yorian and re-equip these Lithoform Blights to it. Mm -hmm. um, you could animate and then give it protection um, from black to keep your faithless haven around. <laughs> so that's a, a little bit of a rough situation, but right now oh. being able to deal with that creature and be able to attack through and gain five is just going to be too much. Yeah. So another creature found here in the Usher of the Fallen, another copy of Yorion to add to Paolo's woes as we see the revealed one come on down and bounce the two Lithoform Blights. And importantly, get very many more creatures down on the battlefield. <laughs> yes. Yeah, looking all but over here for Paulo Vitor Damaderosa. And if we look at their points right now, we know they're in first and second, but leaving the weekend being down three versus yeah. being down one is a big difference here. So congrats to Nassif as long as he can uh, pull this one out. It's looking very good for him right now. Just board state, cards in hand. You know, having the access to the life linkers, it's just, it looks like far too much to overcome here. You know, giant killer is a good start, can take down Yorion, but little does he know that there's a second one in hand with some extra goodies to go along with it in Binding the Old Gods. Yeah, and there's a, oh yeah, I mean, you could Lithoform Blight and then Yorian to make a total of, what, six, ten power with a Yorian? <laughs> this is, uh, that's too much, an impressive That's gonna fashion. be it. Too much to deal with for Paolo Vitor Damodorosa on Monolite Aggro. Gab Nassif picking up a very, very convincing victory. 